Star Wars The Phantom Menace. So going back to the original, not the original trilogy like Episode 4, but the first one of the series, The Phantom Menace. Now, when I went to go see this movie as a kid, I didn't really judge it. I didn't think it was a bad movie because I was a kid and I just enjoyed it for what it was. Now, before I start, I'm going to say I'm not a big Star Wars fanboy. I just love movies. But there is no doubt that there is an inconsistency when this movie came out that contradicts a lot of the originals. For example, we're led to believe that the original movies were really dark and they turned out to be kid-friendly and cheery. But, as George Lucas states, that Star Wars is a movie for 12-year-olds. Or was it 14-year-olds? It, it doesn't really matter. To give this movie credit, there is a lot of good fight scenes, especially with Darth Maul versus Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn. Everyone's gotta admit, when they saw Darth Maul in that fight scene, it was epic. It was what made this movie. Now I'm convinced it's because of this simple fight scene that The Phantom Menace is actually not the worst Star Wars movie ever. In fact, the only thing really bad about The Phantom Menace are two things. One is that if you take away Jar Jar Binks, the entire movie is better, but for some reason Jar Jar Binks is like an annoyance throughout the whole film. If you can get past Jar Jar Binks, like, the entire movie of The Phantom Menace is actually not that bad. Now, my issue number two was the fact that they made Anakin Skywalker a young child. In my opinion, they should have started off with episode one as Anakin Skywalker was just as old as Obi-Wan. They should have been roughly the same age. They should have been friends. This story should have been about their rise of their friendship to the fall of their friendship. That's what that arc could have been about, but no, they had a more of a father, son, adoptive, brother thing going on. But I think it would have been better had they started off with Anakin as a Jedi already with Obi-Wan, with Mace Windu as Anakin's master. That is my opinion, and I think that's what it would have worked. But that's not what we got in this film. Instead, we got a lot of horrible CGI effects. Now, the thing is, CGI was still young in this stage, so there was a lot of goofs, a lot of things that didn't work. Originally, there was a puppet Yoda, but they took him out and they put in a CGI Yoda. Why they did that is beyond me. Maybe it's because to make him more organic inside the film, so that way when he actually does the backflips in episode 2, it would actually make more sense that his body wouldn't change. But, in my opinion, I like Puppet Yoda. They should have stuck with CGI only for that simple fight scene, and everything else would have worked. Or when Yoda was walking. But, hey, you know, it's his choice, so... It's not really that big a deal, but the CGI is glaring. It doesn't age well, and it doesn't do well. It's weird that Jurassic Park, a movie that is almost a decade before this movie was ever released, had better CGI for the dinosaurs than this movie. This, there are a lot of good CGI in that movie, and they worked. Now, I understand. The, the problem with Star Wars The Phantom Menace is that there's too much going on. It's a world, a universe, where there's a lot of aliens, a lot of spaceships. I, I, I can understand where the CGI may be troubling, but if you go back to the original Star Wars films, there's a lot of backdrops that work really well, but in here, in Phantom Menace, all the backdrops just seem cartoony. They seem out of place. And I, I don't know, man. I, it just, I didn't really buy it. And that's one of my issues, is just this movie is not really pretty to look at. Yeah, I mean, you're probably going to laugh, but I like good cinematography. This movie's not that well photographed when it comes to the special effects and all the background characters. Sometimes the actors, when they're talking, you can tell that the actors don't know what they're talking to. And that's the funny part. But there are some good saving graces in this movie. Qui-Gon Jinn is a fantastic character. I'm just saddened that he's not in the other movies for obvious reasons, but I would rather to see him go further. Um, I think Darth Maul is a waste of a character. They should have kept him on to keep going, but the Darth Maul fight scene kind of, it sold me. And lastly, there's Anakin. Like I said, An the whole Anakin story arc, it could have been easily solved from the first movie. I don't know why George decided to make him a young kid. I guess we're going to see his arc from young man to adult. But I would much rather see him as a Jedi already and see his so-called connection with Padme and let them get like sort of a annoyance off each other and they build their relationship from there but no it's the relationship is kind of weird when you think about it because now their relationship is more of a 
brother and sister thing going on because she's a little older. She's like five years older than him and a little taller. So it does get kind of weird. It doesn't really make sense um, when they get together in episode two and three. And I'll get to that in a second. But overall, this is not the worst Star Wars film ever made. If I had to get it a scale from one to ten, I give it about a six. Like I said, it's not the worst Star Wars movie ever made. There's some glaring problems, especially with the CGI. Jar Jar Binks is annoyance of a character, but the battles make up for it. I don't like the Gungans that much either. The Darth Maul versus Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn also makes up for this entire movie, and arguably you can probably just take out the entire movie and just watch that fight scene and like, oh, I just watched The Phantom Menace and I'm okay. Storytelling wise, it's not that well told and it doesn't really compare to the original movies but the fight scenes and the choreography of that is much better and I will give it that and that's my rating and that's why I'm gonna stick to it. Now if you're gonna ask me when I put this movie on my top 100 list of movies I would watch every year honestly no. Um, I can go on YouTube right now and just watch the fight scene between Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn and I'll be satisfied. I don't need to watch the movie. I tried watching it again, but man, it just... I want to take the entire movie and just edit out Jar Jar and a couple other pointless scenes and just edit in Anakin Skywalker already as an older Jedi and I promise I could probably make this a better movie. But that's just my opinion. You know, I'm not trying to bash on the prequels. I'm just saying this is not that good of a movie. That's just my opinion. And guys, Again, it's okay to disagree and agree with each other. It's completely fine. I grew up with the original movies. I didn't grow up with the prequels. So some people do have a good heart when it comes to the prequels and they have a passion about it. I can respect that. That's what you grew up with. But I'm just stating my personal opinion that as a movie as a whole, it's not very well. And I could probably go my whole life and not watch this movie ever again. I'll be, I'll be okay with it. So guys, this is the Great Geek Detective. Let me know what you think about this movie. I gotta go. I got other things to review. Peace out.